Today I'm going to talk about how to process an XML file. Read it, parse it. Here's how the sample looks like. There is a button and a table. When I click on the button, it's going to load XML file into an array and the array is going to get binded over to the table. Now a lot of people are intimidated by XML and let me explain that a little bit. There's a in this project there's a context.xml file and this is how it looks like. This is the declaration, XML declaration, the very first line. Then the is the root element. The element consists of the start tag called contacts, plural, and a end tag. End tag has a slash, con slash contacts. Left angle bracket, right angle bracket. Now each the contacts in, within the root tag, there is a con multiple contact. One contact, here's another contact. Now each one of these, one, two, three, four contacts. So the each contact starts here, end tag. So this would be called the contact element. Each contact has an attribute of call ID. It's either one or two or three. The attributes are written like this. The attribute name equal to sign and the right hand side has the attribute value with the either enclosed within a double quote or a single quote. So each contact has the first, this is the first name element starts first name start tag slash first name you know the end tag and John is the current value of the first name. So that would be your value, first name element, star tag on the left side, end tag on the right side, and John is the value. So that's how the XML goes. So I need to load this up and into a class. So I need to define a class. Here's the contacts class. Uh, of course, there's a contact ID, as you saw, first name, last name, address, phone. So, one, two, three, four, five properties. I'm going to be reading the reading the XML, create an instance of contacts, and store it in an array. Now we can look at the storyboard. In the storyboard, Lesson, this is the view controller, view, and its custom class is lesson 27 view controller. Keep that in mind. There's a button here, it, and here is the uh, uh, table view. We click on a button, it does something and loads the table view. Let's go back here, because its custom class is lesson 27 view controller which is right here. I'm going to open that up now. Close this up and open the assistant editor. Now the lesson 27 view controller has an NS mutable array list of contacts NS XML parser. I'm going to call it a XML parser. XML NS data is going to be, I'm going to call it XML data. An IB outlet to the table view of contacts for that button when I click on it a method and it's this method is the heart at the heart of this tutorial it's right here in the .m file I am going synthesizing the table of contacts all of those variables in the view did load method I am instantiating just you know saying the initial capacity for the list of contacts is 10 for table of contacts I'm setting the delegate and data source to self means meaning that the three most important methods to work with a table are defined here in somewhere I have another tutorial to say you know how these three methods and this one work I have a complete tutorial on that by that by this time if you have been watching them they should be second nature to you 
number of sections, number of rows in section, it, work, it works from the list of contacts and populate it. But that's not what this tutorial is about. This tutorial is about load on contacts. So I'm going to set a breakpoint right there. A breakpoint right here and see. <coughs> Start explaining this code. So as it loads a view did load method, initialize the initial capacity of the list of contacts is 10. And you know, delegate, uh, etc. is that. So that's that. When I click on it, I'll create a bundle type, NS bundle. I'm calling it bundle, NS bundle, main bundle. Then a file path, and a string, a file path using that bundle, path for resource, contact, type, XML. It's talking about this context.xml. Get the file path for it. Then using this file path, I'm going to say NS data, data with contents of file, file path, load it up into the XML data. Just data, you know, from that file is going to be end up in XML data. Now I'm going to instantiate the XML parser, XML parser, alloc in it with data and use that XML data right in here. Now I've got an XML parser working on that XML data. Now before I do anything else with the XML parser, I'm going to, I'm going to need a class that when this XML parser works, it's going to fire some methods. Where are they going to be? They are going to be in context, data, XML parser, delegate. I'm going to call it, you know, call it the same name so it's easy to identify what I'm working with. Alloc init it. And we'll go into it in a second. Now that one has a property called lesson 27 view controller. I'm going to set it to self. So this particular file I am setting an instance of that I'm setting it to that property. So when I go into that file, I'll be able to reference this thing back, mainly working with list of contacts. So that's a key technique right there. I'm linking my current file to the contacts contact data XML parser delegate. You can you know look at it that way. XML parser set delegate to contact data XML parser delegate. So yeah, having done all that, now I'm going to say XML parser parse. As soon as you do that, it's going to start firing those methods that you will see right here. So I'm going to go into that XML parser delegate now and set some breakpoints. Did start element method, characters found method, did end element method. They should be like this. And is, if I run this, you see the XML parse is going to fire these methods, it's going to be reading their XML file, finding these methods. In context data XML parser delegate method, I have a lesson 27 view controller type called lesson 27 view controller that I saw how we link to link it to the lesson 27 view controller. You know, just a second ago I, I was talking about it. A contact data type. To create uh, one contact so I can you know load it up current element value as I'm reading elements I want to know what the value is and that's being used in here when this element fires it has the current elements value element did start method if the current value is nil I'm gonna give it an initial uh, initialize it to a blank string if element name is contact then I'm gonna initialize a contact type but it wasn't it's called at this point it's called it was it was called contacts I'm gonna run it again this time element name is contact so basically it's reading this thing right at this point a second ago it was reading this now it's reading contact so I'm ready to play I'm going to say, in, give me a, the self.contact, alloc init it. This is how I'm going to get, it has an attribute called ID. And that's what I'm doing over here. Attribute dictionary is passed in, in that method. All the attributes of the current element. So I'm going to say, 
uh, from the uh, attribute dictionary give me the object for key ID and I'm gonna load it up in here as, and as you see it's one we're talking about this one right there and if it's nil set it self temp contact contact ID to set it to that here here's that one right there see contact ID is null as soon as I step over it it's been set to one so that's how I'm reading the XML and loading it up now I'm gonna focus on this method when this fires here we go element name element name is first name if it's first name I'm gonna say if it's temp contact name is nil give it an initial capacity of 25 and set it to the current value current value is John and temp contact first name is nothing as I step over it you see here we go temp contacts first name is John current element from the current element I have I've read the XML I'm going to transfer it back into my class so next time I'm re so I was basically reading this thing so next time it's reading you know line by line this uh, this XML so this time it's last name so if it's last name I'm going to do the same thing and fill the last name you see right now last name is being filled third time it is address so I'm gonna fill in the address next time it's the phone so the phone been read and at this point I'm over here now it's gonna hit this I'm done with contact next it's gonna read that one there you go now what is the element name element name is contact so it's gonna do none of this not not this not this not this so that's the logic behind it I'm reading the next contact contact and I'm done with the previous one so at this point lesson 27 view controller list of contacts I can add it in and that is right here lesson 27 view controller list of contacts zero objects as soon as I, here you go one object so that's how I'm reading the con XML file creating a temporary contact object when I'm done I load it up into lesson 27 view controller list of contacts so it has one object right now so I'm going to set a breakpoint over here is gonna now be reading this one one two three four when I hit this I'm gonna there you go you see now two objects three objects four objects and they have all been read so I'm gonna set a breakpoint back in here this time yeah I'm gonna get rid of that one step out yeah here you go so XML part at this point list of contacts has been filled by what contact data XML parser this thing fired off this has all the methods it's reading it it's and since we set it right there I'll be linked it so they are both talking to each other so by by when I came to line 88 list of contacts has been filled And, I've, and it's been loaded so the main thing here is you know what's going on here and in this parser all these methods what's going on in here what's going on in here and what am I doing in here that's how I I've, of course I have to know what XML file I'm working with what are the elements so I can do, do all this if statements and I gotta have a class that I understand I'm gonna link them together it's not going to be automatic but that's basically how this whole thing is working.